Welcome to the Morning Line, everybody. Tom Cassidy alongside Caleb Keller. We start the day with disappointing news out of Lexington, Kentucky. Two-time Eclipse champion Beholder has been scratched from the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, Gallop this morning, scoped after the gallop, and it was found that she bled after the gallop this morning, and the connections scratch uh, declared uh, Beholder will be scratched out of the Breeders' Cup Classic. She was the three-to-one second choice in the morning line, and, and it was a matchup that we were really looking forward to seeing. And granted, there's a lot of other horses in the Classic, but the talk has been Beholder and Triple Crown champ American Pharaoh. Welcome to the set, Tom Cassidy, Caleb Keller, and Caleb, uh, disappointing news to start the day here. And sometimes horse racing is a game that gives us reminders. Every time we see a horse go down or we're in a spill, uh, you get a reminder how dangerous this sport is. This is a reminder that even when the storyline comes together, these are still equine animals that things can go wrong. We talked about the fever that she spiked going into the race, but this was such a, a tremendous race on paper with Beholder, like you mentioned, the superstar Philly from California versus the Triple Crown winner from California. Mm -hmm. But as we know, plans don't always work out like they should. Mike Joyce is on site in Lexington, Kentucky at Keeneland Racecourse. He has more. Mike. Tom, you mentioned the fact that she bled. It was a routine scope after a routine gallop this morning as she prepared for the Classic, and it wasn't a good scope. They did find blood, and as Caleb mentioned, she spiked a fever. She's just an aggressive mare, as Richard Mandela said earlier, and she got herself worked up on the flight and made herself sick. It's as simple as that. It's not serious. It's not serious at all, but it does preclude her from racing in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Even the smallest amount of blood in their lungs is going to preclude a horse racing. Even if they had found this a week ago, they probably wouldn't make the start. They would make the scratch, and this coming so close to the race really what it does is just add to the disappointment not seeing the champion mayor take on the triple crown winner now they have left the window open for her to race next year she's sound she's fine this isn't something that she can't recover fully from she'll be fine after a little bit of time but right now she's not gonna be able to run in the classic we'll look forward to next year as the owners and mr mandela make the decision but that is the biggest bit of news we've had all week long and guys it's not the kind of news that we were hoping for uh, thank you uh, there from, from Keeneland. Beholder going to be scratched uh, from the Classic. It's been declared. Mike, thank you. That's Mike Joyce from uh, Keeneland Racecourse, where they do have live racing uh, today as well. We're about 28 minutes away. But, yeah, the big news, it's disappointing news. Beholder has been scratched. But the good news is it's nothing serious and... There's a chance we see her run next year uh, as well, as long as everything is is good and she's sound and and you know, like we said, this is nothing life threatening, nothing too major. It's just it's bad timing, and you can't go into you know any race uh, without uh, having everything go right. I didn't really think about that too until Mike said it. Potentially coming back next year. Now, if you remember last year going into the distaff, you know, this is a horse that was going to be a heavy favorite. She had a very uh, strong sickness uh, that put her out for quite a while, and she missed the distaff, but. She was going to go to the November breeding sale last year. Yep. So the fact that she scratched last year allowed her to race this year. She was five for five this year, going into the Classic, looking to maybe have a chance to beat a horse like American Pharaoh. And keep in mind, too, these racehorses are actually built to get into their best form at four and five and six years old. We think of horses getting good at three years old because, look, I'm the one that drives the train. Everybody's got derby fever. But so many trainers these days try to get their horse to peak right there in May of the 3 0 campaign. We forget that racehorses still can progress. And in the hands of a horseman like Richard Mandela, Beholder, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, she's like the timeless wonder at this point. So the way that she keeps on improving, it is exciting for next year. But I wanted to tell you that morning after the sickness, I went down to the barn there on Rice Road at Keeneland. And I really got the feeling that it wasn't that big of a deal. I talked to the assistant trainer. He had a big sigh of relief saying, oh, you know, temperature's back to 99 is fine. Talked to Richard Mandela on the phone, and he acted like it really wasn't going to be that big of a deal. But, you know, Simon mentioned last night on the work show that yes. sometimes those things, you know, they, they stay around. It's something that even if it's just a minor fever, it's not something you want lingering a week and a half before the Classic. And every time she ships... It's stressful for the connections, uh, of course, including trainer Richard Mandela. Let's take a look back. The works yesterday. Todd, the shipping fever is a big issue. I, don't, I think people dismiss it sometimes. This is the first time in Beholder's career that she's strung three races together since 2013. She obviously has a history of lung problems. What it means is when horses ship across country, they're in an unnatural state, especially in an airplane. Their, ho their heads are high. When you see horses in a stall or out in the field, their heads are low. It allows the mucus to drain, the bacteria to get out. When they're cross-tied in an airplane, there's no other option. There's no ventilation with windows. So with, you know, we're talking about a journey four hours or plus. She was at that threshold going from LAX to Lexington, about three and a half hours. Horses can come be dehydrated. It can transpire into pleuro pneumonia. They can get lungs. 
lung issues and pneumonia, and Beholders had a history of that, and it always comes back to those horses that have had a history of that. She got over it, she spiked a little fever and rebounded very quickly, which you can do from it. But if that journey had been a little longer, it might have been more dire straits for her. Quick question before I move on to the next horse. How did I get along without you these last four months? <laughs> Simon Bray, welcome back. And it was great to see Simon back yesterday, of course. But, uh, yeah, Simon talked about it yesterday and, you know, the, the toll that shipping can take, especially on a, a filly or a mare that's so very high strong. She's kind of uh, a little too hard on herself. And Simon really showing you the invaluable knowledge that you have of a previous horseman. I mean, Simon has been around great horses like Cigar. And remember, Cigar, the one thing about Simon saying about that great winning streak, Cigar always battled feet problems, which a lot of people don't know. So even with the great horses, there's always those little things that, that are always lingering that you have to show the best of your horseman skills. So for me as a reporter, I'm just seeing it on the surface when I was at Keeneland. The fever went down. It seemed like the connections were fine with it. But Simon gave that great angle last night, and it was kind of eerie. The, basically the night before they announced that Beholder scratched, Simon saying, look, this could be more than what we see, and it turns out that he was right. Certainly was, and hopefully you uh, enjoyed the works yesterday and, and Simon Bray talking about the situation about Beholder, and now we have uh, disappointing news today. But like we said, the positive of it is it's nothing too serious. It's nothing life-threatening. It's nothing too major. There's a good chance uh, that we could see her running next year, and, and obviously we're all, we're all hopeful and hoping for that. So now Beholder is out of the Breeders' Cup Classic, and you can see American Pharaoh is 6-5 to five on the morning line, but I don't believe that's been adjusted yet. So we're going to be adjusting the morning line. We'll have the adjusted morning line to you uh, as soon as we have that, but you would imagine now, Caleb, that makes American Pharaoh even more uh, or stronger of a favorite on the morning line. And what's one of the most easiest and obvious angles you can get in racing? Best horse on a lonely lead. Mm -hmm. And that looks like what it could be on paper. Now, I don't necessarily see American Pharaoh going out there and getting an, a clear, easy lead. Somebody's gonna come out of their game plan. Maybe it's frosted, like that horse did in the Travers. I will tell you, Glenn Eagles has actually been a horse that could race forwardly in Europe. I think Glenn Eagles might be a horse to go out there and show a little pace, maybe smooth roller to get out there. But one of these horses is gonna have to come out of their game plan against American Pharaoh. But now, the dynamics totally change. I mean, I was thinking American Pharaoh goes to the lead, Gary Stevens is sitting there, maybe they, they just back it down and run their own match race. But, um, so let me real, ask you this now. Does that severely hurt the chances of Honor Code? I mean, I was already thinking that Honor Code and Keen Ice were gonna be really up against it. It looked like a slow pace, now it looks like a slower pace. I mean, there's gotta be some type of legitimate half mile because these are world-class animals, but this is not going to be a fast pace here at all, and Honor Code, you look at the two races where he has not got an unbelievably sharp half mile. He's been a little flat, so that concerns me. Same thing with Keen Ice. I mean, he's coming around, but let's keep in mind, Keen Ice is a two-time winner. He had the maiden score and then the upset in the Travers. So I think that Tonalist, Tom, is the horse that has got a chance. I mean, Tonalist, you know, he, he comes from way far out of it. They put the blinkers on. He gets close. He gets real grindy. So you never know what you're going to get with Tonalist, but I think John Velasquez, with that inside post, now he realizes that Tonalist, to me, is the horse that gets much closer and gets the first run at Farrow. Do you think there's a chance we see a similar first half mile, first three quarters that we saw in the Travers now? I think Frosted? so. Yeah, a I think more. so. You know, Frosted's a horse that has shown the ability to get up front and close to the pace. And how about this? If you saw in the work show, Frosted is working the opposite way. How about that? To work the different side of his muscles, which is a bit unique. And I always remember, I always wondered why Barbaro and Union Rags are the two most fit racehorses that I've ever seen, and they're both by the same trainer. And I've heard that Michael Matz at a private training center also trains the horses the opposite way to kind of build up both sides of the body. So it's a bit of a unique uh, training system there for Frosted. I don't know if, necessarily know if it's going to – I don't see Frosted winning the race. I think he can run a bang-up yeah. race. I don't see him crossing the wire first. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the pace, yeah, I would say Frosted. But, but maybe Glenn Eagles is that horse that would surprise people to chase after American Pharaoh. Now, uh, Beholder is out a field of nine in the Classic on Saturday. We'll have the adjusted morning line as soon as that becomes available.